Hey guys, Martina Bex here, and today I'm going to show you how to take any manipulative activity that you already have for your classes as a file on your computer um, and turn it into a digital manipulative activity. So these are activities that students usually would have little cards or strips of paper and they would either be sequencing them or arranging the cards in certain orders and you would have printed these out from a file that's on your computer. So all you need is the file that's on your computer and access to Google Slides. Here we go. So I'm gonna share my screen with you. And I've got here, I create all of my stuff in pages. So here I've got my pages um, document. This is a um, Cinco de Mayo um, jigsaw puzzle. So the students have to, um, they see all these different squares and they have to arrange them so that the sentences match up. So for here, um, for example, it says the Battle of Puebla occurred in 1862. So when they read this and this, they match up across the line. Here, the Mexican general was named Ignacio Zaragoza. There were more than 6,000 French soldiers. So they're trying to match these up um, across the lines. Here, I have a scrambled version of the puzzle. This is how I print it. This is available um, online and I just have it scrambled so that it's easier when I, um, when I cut it out, students can't just match up the cutting lines. So I'm gonna be working with this. So all I'm gonna do, um, the first thing I wanna check for is to make sure that there's no red underlines because I hate red underlines. So here, um, you could just turn off your spell check, but I'm going to ignore the spelling of this word. So make sure, okay, everything looks pretty, everything looks good, and then I'm gonna start taking screenshots. So really quickly, I'm just going to screenshot on my Mac. All I do to get this is Command Shift and then the number four. So I hold down Command Shift and the number four and I'm just taking screenshots super fast of all of these cards. Um, I should tell you one thing I did ahead of time to prep for this because um, the text in this is directional um, when students are looking at the activity when it's printed out, it's not really a problem. There's text on all four sides of the squares and I have all the text facing outward like this. You see it's facing out, facing outside the square. But um, since on a screen, they can only see it in one direction. Um, I decided to change the direction of the text boxes at the top so that they didn't have to try to read um, upside down text because that would be tricky. So I do this, I'm screenshotting all my little cards. Voila, so now I have 12 screenshotted cards. Now, oops, I'm going to open up Google Chrome and I'm going to share that with you. Let's see, so now I'm gonna open up Google Chrome. Okay, so here I have Chrome. I have a brand new presentation in Chrome. And I am just going to go to insert image, upload from computer. So insert image, upload from computer. And I will use my finder to find all these screenshots I just made. So I've got my 12 screenshots that I just did. I'm gonna highlight all of them, open, and that automatically inserts them, voila. I want to get them so that they're all the same size. And the easiest way that I've found to do this, um, unfortunately with um, uh, slides, it isn't quite as easy as it is in, um, in pages, I don't think. But I go to these three little dots here and I go to format options. I could also go to format, the format menu and go to format options. So I'm clicking on just one of the images and I've got my format options menu open, go to size and rotation, lock aspect ratio. That means that they'll always stay square no matter how I change them. So I click that and then I make them whatever size I want. So I'm gonna to see what two inches, that's probably a little bigger than I want. Let me do one that's probably smaller than I want. I'll do 1.5, that's about right. I'm gonna be crazy, let me see what 175 looks like. Non-numeric, come on. Ooh, that's nice. That uh, I think a 1.5 is good. 1.5, so I'm gonna stick with that. And then the nice thing is when I click on another one, the lock aspect ratio is still, um, it holds true. So now I'm just going to, oopsies, click on each one of these and I am 
making it all 1.5 width so that they're all the same and the aspect ratio is locked. So when I change the width, it keeps it in proportion with the height. All right. Do, 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 do. All right. Now, I have found, um, I probably should have done this first. One thing that makes things easier so students actually can figure out what they're doing, I'm going to, I just, I, I've got to remember, I should be telling you what I'm doing. So I just um, copy, made a copy of this slide so you can do edit, copy, or edit, duplicate actually, edit, duplicate. And that makes a duplicate copy of the slide. I use keyboard shortcuts to do it. I just do, I click on my slide over here and I click Command C and then Command V, and that'll make a copy of it. Um, but now I, I'm gonna just get a blank slide. Um, and what I'm gonna do here, this was a trick, I don't remember who taught it to me. Um, could have been Megan Loveless, could have been Courtney Jackson. Um, but I'm just going to create a blank square so students kind of can know where um, it's supposed to go and I'm going to make this blank square. I'm going to keep the, the aspect ratio locked and I'm going to make it 1.75 so it's just a little bit bigger than um, than the squares that students had. Actually, I'm going to make it even a little tiny bit bigger, 1.6. And then I'm going to do copy paste, copy paste, copy paste um, so that I get 15 of these so that students can see where these are going. So I'm going to make the same grid that they'll need to end up with. So there's three squares. Now I'm going to copy all three. And do, 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 do. And there were 12 in all. So I'm going to need 12 squares here. All right. So this is what the final grid looks like. So students are going to know that they have to put this um, on here. They have to put this the, uh, these squares on here. Um, so all you have to do now um, is add these cards to the first slide and all you, you can do that by highlighting all of them and then copying and pasting them onto the first slide. I'm going to show you one more trick that makes things a little bit easier for students. Um, on this slide, um, you can uh, do file and then download as JPEG image. So I'm going to do file, download as JPEG image. And what that's doing is that's making a um, JPEG, um, an image of this slide. Now I'm going to delete all of this stuff. So it's a blank slide again. I'm going to click on these three dots and go to background. You could also go to slide and to go to change background. Image, choose image. I'm going to upload it from my computer. So upload browse. Isn't this fun? And that, and that went to my downloads. So I'm gonna look at my downloads. Here it is, the JPEG that I just created. It's gonna upload it. And now it's set as the background of my slide and I'm gonna click done. Now what this did was now students aren't gonna get frustrated because as they're moving around these squares on top, they're not gonna accidentally move around these gray squares. Slides doesn't have an option to just lock things like um, Pages does or Keynote. Um, and so that can be really frustrating when kids are trying to move around the other things. So this makes it so that they can still see where the squares are supposed to go, but they're not gonna be accidentally moving around the gray slides. So once you have your locked slide, you can put your cards back on here. So you just go to this slide, copy all of your cards, um, you highlight all of them, and then I'm just using keyboard shortcuts, but you could do edit, copy, and then edit, paste. I'm just going to do command C on my Mac, and then command paste. Oh, that didn't work. I did the wrong thing. So command C. And paste that puts all the cards here and then just move them off of the grid and it doesn't matter where they are because when students complete this activity they're going to be seeing it just as you see it now so they're not going to be seeing it in presenter mode so they'll see all these little cards that are on the edges now one thing that i like to do to make things easy for students is to if especially if they haven't done this activity before to place the first two cards and so in this case, um, one of the cards here are 
Let's see if I can find it. Um, I'm looking for one that says El General, ah, this one. El General Mexicano. This is the first one in the grid. I'm just looking back at my original. And then um, La Batalla de Puebla fue or ocurrió. Ah, right here. Nope, that's in 1860. Where is it? Here we go. Okay, ocurrió en 1862. Okay, so I placed the first two cards. Um, you don't have to do that, but I find that that makes it easier for students. And then down here, I'm going to make a little instructions box. If students have done this kind of an activity, whatever kind of an activity it is um, before in class, this, the instructions are going to be a lot easier for you to write. If they've never done this kind of an activity before, then you will probably need to write pretty um, detailed instructions. You might even add an instruction slide. Um, instructions. Um, I'm going to say place each card so that the sentence fragments on either side of the lines form complete facts. Okay, not the best instructions ever, but um, you could write a lot more. I'm just doing this quickly. So right here, you'll see it says La Batalla de Puebla ocurrió en 1862. To make it even more clear for students, I might add a shape like this. I'll draw a shape around these two here. I'll make the fill transparent. Um, make it an obvious highlight color. Make it nice and thick so that students can see it. Um, and then right here, all right, example. La batalla de Puebla ocurrió en 1862. Okay, make that fit in the box and voila. So then students will just, um, when they get this activity, which I can show you how Cinco de Mayo Jigsaw, I named it. Um, an easy way to share, um, oh, you'll wanna delete this um, second slide with your cards. Um, when you share this with students, uh, if you have a learning management system like um, Schoology or Google Classroom, you probably have a way to just share the link as it is and it'll make a copy for your students. If you don't use a learning management system and you wanna send this to your students, all you need to do is highlight the URL here and then delete everything after this last backslash and replace it with the word copy. Then highlight and copy the whole link and send that to students. And what it'll do is it will force students to um, make a copy when they get it. So like if you see here, if I put in the link in a new tab, it'll say copy document. Would you like to make a copy? So students will have their own copy and then they can just complete the activity and send it to you. And that's it. So students are just using this in um, editing mode and they're moving these cards around until they're all placed and all of the sentences make sense. Easy peasy. Um, that was kind of a lot of steps, but it is really simple and it's a way for you to make activities that you already have useful for distance learning. Hope it helps.